Hey guys, Anime Gypsy here with One Piece 881 chapter review. Now, long story short, this chapter has two two parts. Um, the chapter overall is fast paced, but is really nice. We get uh, the material we get is solidly story progression. Uh, we don't get any type of revelation. But we do get characterization for Jinbei, and that's what I want to talk about mostly in this review. Jinbei, the first son of the sea. We get to see a playful side with Jinbei. Jinbei likes that adrenaline rush. He was laughing. He was laughing while he was surfing that deadly tsunami. It was, ooh. What, what, no, not laughing. He was smiling. I mean, guys, look, look, look at that smile. I mean, mm. we never get to see this part of Jinbei. He's always serious. We never get to see him showing that playful, well, I wouldn't say playful, but you know, I think this is actually one of the first times we've seen Jinbei smile in a serious situation. If not the first time, he's, because, jeez, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but those are smiles. Those two pictures on the sides of the panel. Those are smiles. Alright. And mm, this. This, guys. Oh, this. This is solid verification. This scene right here is solid verification of two things. The first one is Jimbei's skills as a helmsman. And the second one is his place in the straw hat pirate crew now we already knew that he was going to join the straw hat pirate crew because you know uh, luffy asked him to and he accepted in the end of fishman island so you know he's officially a straw hat at this point jinbei is a straw hat he is nakama now he is nakama now all of you haters ain't coming now no you ain't commenting down your BS about him not becoming a member of the Straw Hats. He already is. You could say he'll die later because of all the foreshadowing stuff. Sure. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Because with Oda, you can't tell what's going to happen. Oda is twists and turns that you can't see. I mean, that's Oda for you. He's He pulls stuff from places that fans have a and the fans can't even comprehend he, mm, the, I mean, this is the goodness of oda this is why oda is called goda guys he is the master of plot twists and characterizations and world building he is an amazing mangaka that shouldn't be estimated uh, underestimated you, sh you can't predict oda i mean i make theory videos all the time yes uh, that's an attempt of uh, at under at at, at, at uh, at, you know, understanding him, but I'd say if I get one theory right, that will make me a very proud man. I, I've made multiple theories, actually. Um, but, you know, that aside, let's let's just push that aside. Uh, I mean, this right here, Jinbei single-handedly using, furling the sails, well, not furling, but steering the, the, the sails and steering the ship. He's handling both the sails and the wheel at the same time. And he uses the ship to surf inside the whale, not on top. Because at first I thought he was surfing on top of the whale, uh, on top of the wave. But he is... I mean, this is impressive, guys. Uh, this is a tsunami, not, not your average regular wave. And he's just cruising by. Inside... The green room inside the wave room i mean this is guys this is phenomenal and, and the smirk this is what i'm saying about jimbei this we haven't seen this from jimbei at all it's a smile it's he's like the crocodile hunter you guys know what i mean uh i keep he loves he loves putting himself in danger from well, he doesn't love, but he loves this type of stuff. Anything having to do with speed and adrenaline, I think Jinbei is in. Jinbei could... I mean, don't even compare him to a NASCAR racer, because this guy... He ain't playing. NASCAR races are games to Jinbei. This is... Mm. NASCAR racers are kindergartners compared to this guy. Okay. 
now that I'm over my Jinbei hype and my explanation as to what I think of Jinbei at this point. You see Pero Sparrow in that first scene making this weird remark, saying something along the lines of Mama, if you sink them, you will sink the cake. But if he prevents Big Mom from sinking the ship, Big Mom would have eventually realized that there's no cake and his life would have been taken away. If he would have kept his mouth shut, um, then there would have been a big better chance of him surviving later on. That is not accounting to what happened later with Jinbei saving them. So right now, Pero Sparrow has a way out. You could just say that, uh, oh, since the ship sank, um, the cake is sank with it. So, you know, I told you the, sh the cake was there, but you can't get it now because you're a devil fruit user and it's in the sea. So, so uh, that's what's going on with Pero Sparrow. It was a weird remark he said at first. All right, and what we get is a cut into the mirror world. And you see the cockiness that is Birle, uh, displaying cockiness up the wazoo. Oh, your Nakama are dead. So cliche. Wah, wah, wah. And it's so annoying. Birle is one of those characters that I want to see dead. For two reasons, the first one being her devil fruit power is just too much. It's too much. It could do too much with it. I mean, think about it. If, if the mirror world links to every single place in the world, think about the, the strategic value that is Burley at this point. Every single major city is basically seizable by Big Mom if Burley's mirror powers could extend everywhere in the world. I mean, imagine Katakuri appearing in the middle of Marijua during the Marine Fort War. Imagine that. It would have been possible with Birle. They could have snuck in through the mirror world and the Marines wouldn't have had a clue. Birle strategically is a weapon of mass destruction. She really is. You, you could... You could he could send an attack from any direction you want with her, as long as there's a mirror, which in every big city there is. I mean, she is a strategic instrument right there for the taking, and no, it, it's too overpowered unless there's a parameter in which she could be used. So she could only enter places at a certain distance from the mirror world, for, so far from where she currently is at before entering the mirror world. Like, at this point, it becomes more, okay, I see. But she's just too overpowered because you could enter from anywhere. And an invasion of Marijua would be fair game. No. 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 And you have Nami destroying the mirrors and basically captain's orders guys and i get it it's respectful you have to listen to your captain's order even though he's a dumbass that, that's i, I don't want to say character it's characterization for nami because she's put in a tough situation but she respects the captain's orders um and the next the next scene is him talking to uh, Carrot and Chopper, basically telling them, Hey guys, I'm alive. And Katakuri sees him. And just, jeez, I, I can't even know. Uh, the next scene is Katakuri just laying down dominance against base form Luffy. Ah... Uh, uh, I, I honestly think even in Gear 4, Luffy can't match Katakuri. Katakuri is too much. Even though his Devil Fruit is uh, very similar to Luffy's, Katakuri is too much. Even if he doesn't... I mean, I, Katakuri's Devil Fruit has aspects of Caribou's Devil Fruit, of Luffy's Devil Fruit, and of... Uh, what's his face? The <laughs> guy from Dress Rosa forgetting his name he, he's one of the one of the flamingos uh, top commanders um 
ministers or whatever. I keep forgetting his name, Scrobble or Squabble or something. He, he has attributes of all three of them. His stuff is sticky. He could stretch like Luffy, and he could store stuff in his body, as we saw him store the trident in his body in the or, in, earlier in the chapter. I mean, this is... No, Atakuri is too much for Luffy. He is. He, he is too much. And that scene where Luffy is coughing out blood and is laughing, and the first time I thought that was the beginning of him going berserk, but he's just trying to calm down the crew before he goes all out or something because maybe deep down inside he thinks that um he might not make it alive now i had a theory of berserk luffy a berserk luffy form because i said that this is the only way for the story for, for the storyline to make sense and him to beat katakuri at the same time because if he had a different form, which is necessary to defeat Katakuri, it is it, it, it is not optional to defeat Katakuri. It is a necessity. There needs to be a gear 5 in order for Luffy to, to defeat Katakuri. It is essential. And he has to because there is no way out. There is no way out. And the only way for that to make sense is if is if there was a form he couldn't use for some reason against Cracker and Doflamingo, the two other people he fought after the time skip that were just leagues above him. And I mean leagues in all sense of the word. I mean, oh god. And I hate how the anime is, but that's different. No, no, no. The only way it makes sense is that there's a form that he wasn't able to use against Luffy, against Katakuri and Doflamingo. And the only re only reason why someone wouldn't be able to use a form like this is if there is some sort of drawback that is just too steep for him to take. And the only thing that comes to mind is him losing control because if he lost control uh, during the Cracker fight or during the Doflamingo fight, he would have killed his friends. Maybe. It would have formed that powerful. And it also ties into the fact that he told Nami to break the mirrors because now there's no way for him to attack Nami with Burley. If he had Burley with him, there's no feasible way for him to get at Nami and Jinbei. So, yeah, this was him trying to cheer them up. Kind of sad. It, it, it was Cro Crozon, uh, Crozon, um, Rosinante. It was reminiscent of Rosinante's scene where he was laughing. It's like, I'm gonna be fine, or you know, that lost scene. And then the Karibu aspect of oh god, the Karibu aspect of Katakuri's devil fruit, the storage aspect, right there, right there. No, it's it's too OP. It really is. But you know, you need to be that strong in order to be a commander. Even <coughs> even Cracker was too OP. Imagine imagine a guy that is able to create soldiers that are twenty times str like base Luffy himself could probably take out about a thousand marine easy. Imagine something stronger than that. Then imagine an army of something stronger than that. Imagine someone that could produce an army constantly for a day of people stronger than that or at average with that type of strength. That is scary. That is cracker. That is cracker, my friends. That is cracker. That is Charlotte Cracker right there. And Katakuri is stronger than him. Let that sink in. Let that. Let, let that get into your mind. Let, let, let that soak real good. And then you have him saying, I ain't planning on dying here. Which we know he won't because he's the main character of One Piece. But and, and the only way I see this happening, the only way I see the storyline progressing uh, without any plot holes is if he does something like this. Or if he awakens a power. Now, it, it looks now like he's going to awaken a power because he looks so desperate. And if he does, I'm wrong and, you know, 
So what? It's it's Goda for a reason. It's Oda for a reason, guys. It's you can't you you, you can't confidently predict him. And up next is a One Piece theory predict slash prediction. I'm just joking. Probably will make one though. Um, and I know that there's a low chance of it actually happening. People like um, like Rogers Base and King of Lightning sometimes get theories, but they could attest to how unpredictable Oda is. You can't just make a theory like that and expect it to work. No, those theories take thought. And even then, Oda could pull a 360. Oh no, a 180, because a 360 you go all the way around. You know what I mean. If you liked the video, guys, please leave a like. If you didn't, please comment down why you didn't down in the comments below. And until next time, guys, this is Anime Gypsy, and I'm out. <laughs>